Hi, good afternoon everyone. I'm Elisa. I'm a tech editor here in Brussels with your active and we have a wonderful panel today. We have Stuti from Kraken Ventures. We have Audrey from Spartan Labs, Eva from The Graph and finally Emma from Definity. Um, this is a huge topic and I see, I say we just get right to it. Um, so, Stuti, I wanted to ask you, can you just explain to us what is this trust crisis in AI? Does it exist and what does it revolve around? So, AI has ushered in a completely new renaissance for tech. But one of the concerns is a lot of what is being developed is being developed in an extremely centralized way that where power is probably going to be sitting with maybe two to three companies entirely. But at the same time, we are expecting AI to take over many of our jobs, right? So I think this centralization of power um, behind these models that are black boxes um, in a way that just completely proliferates the world is something that has made people very concerned at the moment. And I, I do think that this does open up a reasonable conversation around how can we now start to manage trust and accountability. And I think blockchains have emerged as a potential solution. The good old promise of blockchains in decentralization. Um, Eva, do you want to maybe run through in your mind how it is that crypto can help in this trust crisis? Yeah, so I, I, I think that there's a, maybe a trust crisis when we think about Web 2, but I think in the Web 3 space, everyone's pretty aligned that we need to decentralize AI. So um, a lot of what we've been thinking about on the graph side is when you have used you know, something like a decentralized network or a distributed network of uh, node operators or model operators, what becomes the trust crisis then? Because I would say there's still even a trust crisis at that point um, where you don't know if the output of the model is accurate. You don't know if um, maybe other node operators are colluding on model outputs. And for some use cases like predictions, that could actually be really valuable and, and, and vulnerable. So. Um, a lot of what we've been thinking about is um, verifiability and basically how do you verify um, either the inputs or the outputs to a model or basically wh what is sort of the minimum viable verifiability. So um, is it simply just having a network of operators that can kind of, um, you know, share the result and if, you know, the majority of them have the same result, um, then that is a verif sufficiently verifiable model. Um, but I, I would also say that the trust crisis comes in hand only for users that actually care about trust. Um, one thing that we're seeing is like some users care about verifiable data and they really want that. That's like their use case. Some don't care at all. They just want maybe an easy way to get access to a model. Um, so I think it'll really depend on the use case itself. Um, for something like ChatGPT, people might not care at all. Um, for something like predictions or agents that are interacting with your wallet, you probably would care. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe you want to jump in a little bit here because you work with a lot of projects. Yeah, so I was just thinking I use ChatGPT on a daily basis and I actually don't worry about where my, what happens to my data and what kind of data is being used to generate a response. But when I think of different types of use cases, so when we look at AI agent that maybe one day execute a complex DeFi transaction in my name, then maybe I would be interested in actually verifying what kind of, what happens to the data and whether the data that is being used to do that is being tampered with or is biased. Same goes for content moderation or for all kinds of uh, use cases, uh, agents and will be used for in the future. And what we do at Definity is currently exploring on-chain AI model smart contracts. So you actually run an AI model on a smart contract on-chain. And that actually helps you to verify the data that uh, is being used for that. Of course, this is like early, uh, <laughs> uh, we are like early in that research and you can only run limited amounts of data on chain, but maybe in the future with the advancements of technology that's gonna change. 
it's interesting to me that you you said this separation between like agents and non agents agents being AI models that actually like do stuff for you um, but maybe because I'm a journalist for me when I use chat GPT um, for knowledge that is also really really important because I need to know what the sources are, are to be able to evaluate this information so in my view, the trust crisis goes even deeper than that. But of course, I understand that like agents aren't doing stuff. And much like in real life, we need to know who did what. Um, all that being said, do we actually have the technology for this right now? Audrey, you are a CTO. So maybe you want to speak a little bit on that. Yeah, um, you know, I think that right now we're in the building of the infra layer. You, um, I was just recently at Consensus in, in Austin, Texas, and everything was about decentralized AI infra. How do we get the data? How do we get enough compute? How do we um, get, you know, an interaction layer where then consumer or, you know, software can be built on top of? So I do think that right now we're just laying the pipelines, laying the, the guard rails laying all of the the access and uh, to the training and pre-training so that we can have decentralized ap applications I don't think I mean there's a lot of experiments and even at Spartan labs we are you know incubating um, some projects that are starting to think about how um, AI can be more meaningfully used uh, uh, um, in in decentralized applications but I think that there's just so many step ones that need to happen Happen, especially around like the data, how do we verify it? How do we um, keep track of like when a model is generated? Is it generated using correct uh, uh, data, making correct assumptions? And how do we ensure that, um, you know, that we can trust it and it's verified the same way we would want to trust and verify a transaction that happens on the blockchain as well? Yeah. I, I think one of the other things to consider as we're talking about the technology that will enable this intersection of crypto and AI is that crypto and machine learning have very different paradigms. So smart contracts are very deterministic. It's supposed to be if this, then that every single time. But then machine learning is probabilistic. You know, if I give the same like, you know, input five times, I might get five different answers. So how do you actually marry these two paradigms together when we intersect these technologies? And I do think that a lot of this work is being done on the cryptography side, which is very much in development right now. So how do we do it? That's, that's a question for the founders. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that these are design decisions that founders are taking on individual bases. Some are deciding that maybe a probabilistic approach is okay, but a lot of what's happening is, like to, around this is with ZKML, where the idea is that we do this machine learning um, computation off-chain, and then what we bring on-chain is the output in a verifiable way, but also the verification that that um, machine learning operation was actually performed because it was done off-chain. Yeah, and I, you know, like it, it, with AI, there's this saying like garbage in, garbage out, right? So you can't really, if you're getting really bad, you know, um, results from a model, it's not, it's probably not the model itself, it's probably the data that you put in. So I think that if we wanted to start at the basic level of having trust of decentralized AI, it starts with the data. The data is the most important. How is it collected? How is it stored? And how can we verify what data is being used? Used in order to uh, in order to to produce a model, and if we can start with some verification there, even though the outputs are you know not randomized but differentiated, we can kind of have more trust of of that the process works because the data we put in is verified and and and, and has some proof behind it. Yeah. Um, You're touching a very important point because I've been thinking. How and why should people actually share their data? Right now, if I contribute my data, my data is going to get stolen and I'm not the owner anymore. And I think the unique uh, capability that blockchain technology has is that you can contribute, let's say, to an AI model that is governed by a DAO and still get rewards for the AI training 
or the fine tuning or also, also creator's economy, right? You could prompt and create an NFT and then still get, get rewards for it or stay owner of it. While today, everything that I feed into AI models that are run by big tech are now in the end owned by big tech. Isn't that, I mean, related to what, Eva, you brought up in the beginning? Now we're kind of talking about personal data, right? Like my interaction with a certain machine and the data that is generated, which is already in the hands of big tech companies. And I don't know on a day-to-day -day basis how much people care about their privacy. A, lo a lot of people do, but a lot of people don't. And that's why we have big tech companies. So... And then there's, of course, like more industrial or supply chain data, which will naturally gravitate around specific companies. But within this context that we're discussing, is there a problem from the get-go of like the big tech companies that don't necessarily want to build decentralized AI? They just have a lot more data that is probably easier to verify as well. Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely a challenge. I think everyone in this room agrees that we would love the Web2 big tech companies to you know, utilize open protocols. Um, I'm personally a little bit less interested in those use cases because it involves like convincing large companies to change their philosophies. I think us focusing on how do we make the products that we're building in Web3 better and whether AI can actually help Web3. Um, and so I think there are actually ways, like, imagine if there was a chat GPT, like, experience on every single dApp, like, on Uniswap, DYDX, whatever it might be, maybe that would change the way that people even behave, and we would grow adoption, you know, in Web3 via, you know, AI use cases or AI tooling. Um, so I think there's a lot of really interesting ways that, like, we could maybe even focus more on um, how to think about the AI problem within Web3 use cases rather than Web2. Um, and like almost dog food our own protocols. Like if we really want these big companies to eventually use us, you know, for decentralizing GPUs or whatever it might be, um, they probably want to see large projects in Web3 succeeding in doing that as well. Yeah, I just want to comment on the privacy part. I think that is very interesting. Like we've all, like tech has been talking about like privacy and data sharing for so long, and it's true. Like people uh, you know that they should care about their data privacy, but most people don't in like their day to day uh, actions. And and in a way, you don't mind sharing your data if it's going to improve your, your experience. If, if, if Google learns what I like and I don't like, and I'm able to like search more quickly for the things that I want, I actually don't care if they're, or you know, to a certain degree, uh, if they're using my data, right? Um, so I think that if we start talking about decentralized AI just from a privacy standpoint, we're going to lose a lot of people because this just isn't a problem that mo like a pain point that most people feel. So I like the idea of trust because I think trust is really the essence. It's not about privacy. You know, like with Google Gemini, um, when it first, when it did their launch and people didn't trust the results uh, because there was, you know, there was some uh, special kind of ways that they were, um, you know, manipulating the models to, 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 you know, return in a certain way, right? So I think people can, can be concerned about trust. I, if I ask ChatGPT to give me some, some information or some a bit of knowledge, I want the, to know that it's an objective bit of knowledge that I'm getting from, uh, from the AI models. So I feel, this is why I feel trust is more important. And privacy, yes, it's important, but uh, this is not going to be what brings the masses over to decentralized AI. I, I do think that there is a difference between, you know, talking about like consumer grade AI and then business grade AI. So I think like while consumers might not individually care so much about um, privacy and trust, businesses definitely do. And there's some industries that are regulated in a way where they have to, like, for example, um, with like uh, medicine and hospitals, you have HIPAA, right? So I think that in those situations, this combination of crypto and AI has the potential to unlock um, functions such as being able to um, compute over data that is not allowed to sit next to each other without ever actually having to share those inputs, but being able to create a model and an outcome from that um, verifiably. Mm -hmm. So you do you feel like these um, more B2B um, crypto AI projects have even more potential or let's say easier to realize potential? 
So I, I think that these, I don't think that there's necessarily B2B crypto AI projects, but there's crypto AI infrastructure projects, as I said, like, like ZKML, for example, um, where I think that their go-to-market is a lot more straightforward in that they're able to validate what they're building with a business that might want it. And I think it's a lot easier to do that than to validate something um, that needs to reach the hands of many and have like a ton of network effects in that way. So as we're starting to build out that initial kind of you know, combination of cryptography, machine learning, intersecting each other infrastructure, I, I think it's just a, it might be a more efficient way to build that and making sure that it's being validated along the way. I mean, how, how easy is that to explain to a hospital like ZKML? I, I'm sure that there's work involved, but I actually think that a lot of these entities are already familiar with encryption, right? There's um, like a standard called like SGX, which is, it's a secure computing environment that's developed by like Intel. Actually, we use it, um, there's some projects that use it in crypto as well called like TEEs, so these trusted execution environments. Um, this in, you know, outside of crypto is called confidential compute. So there are ways that these organizations understand the, the importance of privacy and they're looking for ways to preserve it um, when they do share data across organizations. And I think, uh, you know, these advances that we're making in cryptography also are going to enable us to do this without actually having to rely on specific hardware. Uh, I've been informed we only have two minutes. Uh, wow. So, any last remarks? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we have two minutes. Yeah. I. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. One more question. Um, yeah. I just. My. My real question is like, at what stage are we in this? Because this is something that's been discussed um, in the last year, basically, since AI started. Uh, GPT-4 and like just became really big and what progress has crypto made in the last year? I, um, I can start there. I, <clears throat> I, I'm very optimistic about decentralized AI. The projects that we're seeing at Spartan and you, especially like, so if you look at the infra layer, the decentralized compute is like light years ahead of where it was even a year or two ago when we were talking about decentralized compute. Um, especially like, it, it generally used to be for gaming, now it's becoming more for AI. And just the amount of compute power that we're able to get with like an Aether, or um, yeah, it's, uh, these uh, uh, um, uh, projects is a lot, right? And then you bring on uh, other aspects of like how we're collecting the data, how we're ZKML, oh my gosh, like, you know, this is a new um, thing that's going, but just it's going so fast and there's so much uh, code and development and now you have uh, machine learning models that are actually on chain um, small models. So I do believe that there's a lot of uh, progress and we're moving fast. Are we moving as fast as like Web3 AI? Definitely not. I think that there's a lot of work that needs to be done because web, you know, web 2 AI is moving so quickly and they're getting so much funding. So it's kind of feeling like we're trying to catch this like runaway train. Um, but go, you know, like my major thing is that when we talk about AI versus Web3, I, always, I feel that AI needs decentralization. It needs blockchain because we can't allow, you know, just a couple of companies to control something that eventually will be such a big, large part of our everyday lives. Um, so AI needs decentralization. Does Web3 need AI? Uh, yes, but not to the same degree. Web3 needs AI to improve you know, user experiences, to improve automation, to improve um, some of the ways that we interact with the blockchain. But AI needs decentralization, and, I, and I, I hope that more people start thinking about like what what the future looks like if there's only you know a, you know three or four third parties that control all of the LLMs that we an interact with, or all of the models that determine what we do, and if we get hired, and if we get pulled over by the police, etc. It's very important. Yeah. I would say that we've made a lot of progress in that there are ten plus decentralized AI protocols live today, all sort of, you know, serving in their own ways. Um, you know, you, like you can run Dali on, on a decentralized network today, very exciting. 
Um, I would say we haven't made as much progress on the verifiability, and it's a big question mark to what extent and sort of a, for which use cases that's relevant. I would say we have not made very much progress on the demand side. Um, like, I don't think there's a lot of companies knocking on people's doors. Um, you know, like even on the graph side, we're still trying to figure out what is the right use case that's actually valuable to dApps or, you know, Web3 projects where they want to use AI and decentralize AI as the right solution. Um, so I think there's a lot more we can do in figuring out within Web3 and Web2, like how and wh how do people use these networks? What's the right use case rather than just sort of building out the infrastructure? I, I do believe the narrative is far ahead of the technology at the moment. The, like last year when, you know, crypto's star was kind of falling because it was post FTX, AI star was rising really fast thanks to all the advances with Claude and ChatGPT. But at the same time, Blockchains, are, they tend to be very low throughput um, infrastructure, whereas AI models are very heavy. So there are very interesting projects at the moment. I mean, I see Keone in the crowd, like working on Monad, where they, they are trying to make this underlying infrastructure much more high th throughput. And then on the other hand, we have some very interesting um, work being done on the cryptography side with like zero knowledge to actually allow us to bring computations that we're doing off-chain, on-chain, to be able to actually marry what is being done in the AI side with crypto. I think that these are still, some of these things are still in the research and development phase, but it's some of the most exciting technology that I have been seeing being developed in crypto in years. Yeah. Emma, any last thoughts on you from where we are? On yeah, uh, don't trust, verify. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we could talk about this all day. We've already been talking about it for like an hour. Um, but I think we have to end here. Thank you so much for joining us and thanks for listening. <laughs>